I take a look at Bountiful, uh, it's kind of interesting to me because um, there's been young families that have committed to moving out there. And uh, of course we have uh, Sean and Carrie Purvis with their two kids and Brian and Annie uh, Williams with their two kids. And we have uh, Andrew and Megan with their three kids now. And uh, we're gonna have Austin and Christina with their two kids, Allie and, and uh, Trevor with their three kids are just about to break ground. And my Annie and Brian should break ground this year with another three kids. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, to have those children, you know, that this is a, a vision that Arthur Oakman had in 1954, and he gave a uh, inspired document to the priesthood at that conference in 1954, and he talked about building communities so that young children and new babes can be born and grow up without sin and division under righteousness. We're seeing those days begin to happen that he witnessed in 1954 in his vision. And I'm just so excited by that. I can't tell you. And, and to see that expand and other communities uh, uh, be purified and, and uh, so that uh, we can uh, have our children uh, live a righteous life and grow up in righteousness uh, is so exciting to me. I, I can't tell you enough about that. How much time do we have? Should I? going a little faster or are we yeah. okay yeah get going faster um okie doke where am i um departments and divisions but around page 54 uh media and public relations and all of that includes uh our website uh our live streaming our printing uh of, of any publications hastening times uh news briefs and we have a total of uh twenty thousand six hundred dollars um, versus last year's expenses of 24. was so high. Brother Jim, if someone has a microphone, bring it up here. Is the uh, proposed roofing work on the headquarters building, not a budgeted item? No. Um, any, any capital improvement or any major repair like that, um, we don't put it in the uh, operating budget, the calendar operating budget, because it would distort um, yeah. the expense uh, in one year. And um, so we pay that out of reserve funds um, offline from the, from the regular operating budget. But 
that's your point. We need to get better at if we ever get to a point where our expenses are much less than our income, we should be putting reserves aside into the depreciation reserve so that when those expenses come up, that they're automatically taken care of by our uh, proper accounting procedures. We haven't had the luxury of doing that in the last seven years because we haven't ended the year with any significant um, reserve uh, and able to apply that. So, so it's, it's not a line item on the budget for the roof repairs. But Jim is referring to that uh, you all might not be aware of. We're at a point where we need to really do something with the roof. We've been patching it and patching it and patching it. Um, we have a $150,000 estimate, which was the low bid, um, to repair or replace the roof uh, on the oldest part of the building, uh, the, uh, the 1918 part of the building. And um, the, uh, we've submitted that to the county for uh, getting a permit and approval. And we'll be talking more after conference about uh, when we pull the trigger for when those repairs are actually made those funds are expended. Um, those funds are going to come out of the general fund, out of uh, the uh, lunch partner fund, and out of the um, reserves from center congregation as a cost share um, for that building. So that's where the expenses come from. It's generally a split of 60% of the general church carries, 20% lunch partners, and 20% the congregation. So, and that'll come out of their reserves. Good question. The, um, we're also trying to do something on, on the expense side. I, I know uh, Dave Van Fleet and, and Jim have been working on uh, monitoring where the expenses uh, are coming for the utilities so we can do a better job of uh, controlling those utility expenses. Um, and there's a lot of things we can do with current uh, heating and cooling uh, technology that can improve that number rather dramatically. We just get a 10% improvement in the cost of utilities for here and uh, the headquarters building, uh, that's over $8,000 a year in savings. If we hit 20%, that's $16,000 in savings. So um, we're looking at that uh, as the opportunities arise. Uh, we're projecting um, a total operating expense of $463,475, $13,000 more than we spent last year, which leaves us a net increase of $1,875. So that is the budget. Um, we didn't pull it up on a motion because we'll do that tomorrow and uh, when we're prepared to vote on it. And uh, if there are any uh, questions tomorrow that you might have, uh, we'll probably take a moment uh, to see if there are any uh, and answer those, but then we'll bring it up for a vote uh, at tomorrow's business session. That's all I have, Brother Larson. Um, brothers and sisters, um, I want to sincerely thank Presiding Bishop with regard to going through those details for us. Sometimes it's difficult to follow through, but uh, it's absolutely necessary that uh, the members of this church know uh, what their tithing funds and other contributions are going for in support of the work of this church. And uh, as I say, it sometimes it's, it's kind of boring, and I'm surprised there weren't more questions, but I, I guess that means you either understand it or you don't care. <laughs> but anyway, I want to thank Bishop Romer for, for those details. Um, there is a, a monthly um, financial report that comes to the First presidency on my desk, and I go through it in great detail. And I think uh, Sister Madden sometimes, when she put, lays that report there, wonders, well, when President Larson's coming over, <laughs> check on things. But anyway, I think we, we have a, a few minutes left, and there is one item that I think that uh, hasn't been brought to our attention uh, very clearly. I think uh, at least it was mentioned in the welcome part. That has to do with the formation of the South Central District with regard to the church, because this was a real step forward in, in the remnant church 
in the formation uh, of a district. And I'm going to ask uh, President Van Cannon to uh, briefly uh, go through that uh, uh, formation uh, because he essentially spearheaded that and, uh, and Brother Albert Rogers is associated with that also. So, uh, Brother Jim, would you brief uh, this awaiting assembly? Yes, sir. I'd be glad to. <laughs> on that topic. This is a little spur of the moment, and so uh, since sometimes I, I can't remember when I slept last, I don't always know dates, so uh, I'll look to Brother Albert, and I might bring him up here to help me remember the dates at which this occurred. Uh, President Larson, I believe it was about two or three years ago, uh, asked me to uh, engage the Saints uh, in the South Central area uh, to talk about the idea of a district. It had been talked about before and so forth. And so uh, I did that. I believe it was last year that, that we did that. And uh, so, um, and the reason it took me so long, by the way, is there was a couple of things we had to do in the middle of that. We got busy. So that kind of happens if you get on the task list. But uh, I was uh, privileged to be able to go and do that. The, uh, I met with the, uh, the Rogers, Arkansas, the uh, Carthage, Missouri, the Sperry, Oklahoma, and the Black Gum, Oklahoma branches. And uh, I have to tell you that it was, uh, it was really a pleasant surprise because I, I didn't know how I was going to be accepted because, uh, you know, when you have somebody come down from the presidency, you're thinking, uh-oh, this guy's coming down here to tell me what to do or whatever, and I, I didn't want to be that guy. I wanted to be, uh, uh, to come and to hear and, and to understand. And uh, I'll tell you, the saints were just incredible in each and every one of those branches that we came and talked about what a district was and, and maybe looked at the scriptures. And we approached it a little different in each branch because there were different questions and different things that they wanted to know. Um, and I wanted those branches to consider the question by themselves so they didn't feel any peer pressure. So we didn't have an initial vote uh, to begin with as an assembly, but we did that branch per branch. And uh, I, um, I especially appreciate this. I, I'll say this, uh, uh, it, it's, um, it's apparent I'm not a, a country boy, I'm more of a city boy, right? So um, uh, they, they accepted me and loved me anyway, and I think that's just wonderful. <laughs> uh, but uh, all kidding aside, they, I think they like to kid me a little bit about that. But um, I, the spirit that was among the branches was just phenomenal. The desire to come together for the purposes of building a district and to ultimately build the kingdom. Um, I saw that in the people's eyes and I was so impressed with the zeal and the the courage that it takes to do that and to step out because you know when you do something like that you're always going to ask yourself oh my goodness is there this is going to be a lot more work that I'm going to have to do and uh, I think once I convinced them it probably wasn't going to be as bad as what they think and that they probably would enjoy it I think that more probably helped a little bit as well um, brother Albert would you like to come up just to just a minute uh, bro brother Albert we had a uh, meeting for organization and uh, during that organization meeting, um, uh, President, we had uh, uh, President Don uh, Burnett of the, the 12 and uh, Roger Tracy of the 12. And we had uh, all of the pastors uh, for the different branches there for the organization meeting. And we had President L uh, Larson on Skype. So I had him projected on the wall. And then he, I had a camera over this so that he could see everybody uh, in the district organization meeting because he wasn't able to make it at that time. And so that was a real treat, I think, for, for him and as well as for everyone else uh, to be able to see him. And uh, he made the nomination, you know, back here in Independence, I love technology, uh, there in Sperry uh, for Brother Albert Rogers uh, as the uh, district president. And of course, then we had our vote and he was... Uh, uh, accepted, and I told him it was a good thing, not a bad thing, and uh, so uh, he, of course, graciously accepted, 
and uh, here we are today. So I'll let him talk a little bit about uh, what they've been doing so far. We've got a lot of activities planned, and you can talk about your counselors that you chose and all that. This was unexpected. I, I would like to say that we're the unanimous group. Uh, all the branches, uh, whenever they voted individually to whether they wanted to become a district or not, everyone voted unanimous. And uh, uh, Brother Roger, uh, let's see, you're right down here somewhere, uh, had mentioned also that uh, we need to be known as a unanimous group. And uh, it, it does feel good to know that there was no opposition. Uh, my wife uh, came to me after we had organized officially as a district and said, when we have a district meeting uh, for a, uh, a uh, business meeting, I would like to volunteer to be the women's leader. And she said, I really feel moved. And when she shared that this morning in the prayer service, and that's uh, uh, very wonderful that uh, that, that happened. Uh, Brother Denny Post, sitting right down here, uh, is my uh, secretary. Uh, I've been telling everybody he brings me my coffee every day, but uh, uh, that's not true. Uh, he's a very dear brother, uh, very graciously accepted the responsibility to be the teacher, uh, be the secretary and to keep the notes and uh, of our business meetings and a very wonderful man uh, to work with has uh, uh, been willing to do anything and has said that as in the, as much to uh, anything i need him to do he will be there for me uh, we've visited several times on the phone and, the, and since we've become a district and and uh, uh, what a joy it is to work with him uh, brother john atkins his uh, uh, president of the branch uh, at Rogers, Arkansas, is uh, one of my two counselors. Uh, very graciously accepted when I asked him. And uh, uh, Brother Steve Van Meter, the uh, uh, president of the Sperry branch, uh, also I asked, and uh, he too very graciously accepted. And I know I've got two good brothers to keep me straight uh, on each side of me and to keep my back. Uh, we have uh, Jared Dolan from uh, Rogers, Arkansas as well, that accepted to be our uh, youth leader uh, of our district. And uh, we have Brother John Atkins uh, is also going to serve as our men's leader at the time. And uh, when I asked him if he'd do that, it was because he organizes the men's retreat every year at Black Gum Forest and has for the past three years. And, why change that? He does such a wonderful job. We uh, are also uh, planning a uh, mini reunion, or actually we're calling a mini retreat in June, that uh, we're going to come together at the Black Gum Campgrounds, and uh, our district will get together and have a weekend of ministry, and we'll have our final service at the Black Gum Branch on that Sunday, and I'm hoping to have standing room only. And uh, I, there's been several that uh, are from up here that have uh, shown an interest to be there. We're planning a fish fry on that Saturday evening, uh, and that all depends on my fishermen down in Oklahoma. We're uh, currently hoping to save up enough fish to feed everyone. But uh, our, our district uh, retreat, we're not setting a price. Uh, really didn't know what to start it out at, but we want everybody to come. So we're gonna take up an offering. And uh, there too, my brothers and sisters, I hope that uh, we're very <coughs> generous and that uh, we can start turning a profit there. Uh, what a wonderful place it is to be at the Black Gum Campgrounds, the times I've experienced there. Uh, the very first year that I was part of the Witnessing Weekend down at Black Gum, I stayed on the grounds there for the first time and had a very uh, moving experience. Uh, while I was trying to sleep, the Lord was trying to give me a message. And uh, I said, Lord, I can't, I can't have this message because I'm new to the remnant church. They're not going to accept something like this for me. And uh, as it was, it, uh, it turned out, you know, the Lord had other things in mind. And after the, the rooster uh, down the road a ways crowed three times that morning, I knew I was in trouble. If, if I didn't take care of what the Lord had laid on my heart. Uh, 
God uh, definitely uses those that are willing servants. And there's not anything, uh, just as Nephi says in 1 Nephi, I think, uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 65, he says, God will not give you something to do, save he'll not provide a way for you to accomplish the thing that he wants you to do. And that was when Nephi was asked to, to go back and get the records from Laban. What a uh, wonderful God that we have, because I know that he chose about the dumbest country bumpkin of Oklahoma to uh, be a part of this. And uh, I, uh, I do do this out of all humility, and I, I know we all feel that. I want to help. I want to do whatever I can. You lead, and I'll follow. And uh, to be the one asked to lead is a difficult thing to say yes, but God doesn't ever say no to us, does he? he when we have needs, he, he supplies our needs. And uh, what a wonderful opportunity it is for us to come together as a group. Uh, I don't know if uh, they've talked to the presidency from Ava, but I understand Ava wants to uh, be a part of our uh, uh, retreat and uh, so it's, it might be something to take into consideration we'd love to have you uh, as well as our sisters from a couple of other areas of Oklahoma and uh, of course they're part of us anyway so uh, uh, we certainly expect uh, you two to be there and uh, uh, anything that that uh, we do we do it for the kingdom and uh, what a wonderful thing it's been here this year, I feel a difference every time I come up here, and we grow, have grown so much closer together, and like I shared this morning, though I may not remember names, and, and just today, uh, Brother Tony Hill, that I know dearly from Facebook, finally came to me. I, I, I didn't even have to ask anybody, it just uh, one of those things that comes to your mind, and uh, here's his dear uh, wife. Uh, is, has been my Facebook book friend for for even longer, and that name just came to me a while ago, and now it's left me again. <laughs> but uh, she, she has been a, a dear uh, loved one as well, and uh, I enjoy hearing things from all of you on Facebook, and and uh, I just look forward to uh, being in the kingdom together uh, with the Lord as our, our teacher and guide. Thank you. Well, Brother Albert, it's uh, been a pleasure to hear your testimony with regard to the formation of that district and your support. There's a man that's on fire, brothers and sisters. And I will say that uh, in, indeed it is the first district uh, that the Remnant Church has, uh, has come to form. Uh, we believe there may be others uh, in the making, so uh, we can look forward to that. We got our feet wet with the formation of that district, and uh, it's, apparently it's going to go very, very well. Uh, remembering those branches that are down there, that Sperry, Black Gum, Rogers, and Carthage. Okay, those are the four branches that are down there. And uh, one other thing is that uh, with regard to Ava, uh, we have a, a new presiding elder there. Uh, Brother Frank Potter, are you here? Stand up, if you would, please. There's Brother Frank Potter that has recently accepted the uh, role of uh, presiding elder at Ava, Missouri. So we're glad you're here and accept that responsibility, brother. So we'll be hearing more from you, I'm sure. Thank you. Um, just a quick couple things before we close. Um, I want to uh, remind you that uh, out in the foyer are those two tables. One of them is, uh, is the... Um, youth table, and I'm sure you're all familiar with that. That's where all the crowds gather and, and looking at all those items that are up there for sale in that fundraiser. So please uh, continue to uh, uh, contribute. And the other one is uh, Sister Sharon Haley, who has the table with the shirts and ties and other things on that table also. So uh, I would just remind you to uh, patronize those tables. With that, uh, we're going to uh, close this session. Uh, we're going to recess until tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, <clears throat> August, April 8th, 2017, at 10 o'clock. 
in which we'll consider the document and a couple of other things to finish the business session. So with that, we're going to stand together, sing hymn number 16, praise him, praise him, and High Priest John Atkins is going to bring us a prayer of benediction. Now, there will be a, a session in the conference center here at uh, 4 o'clock uh, till 5 with uh, Brother uh, Romer, and uh, some of the rest of us are going to meet somewhere else, up in the fellowship hall or, or uh, sanctuary. Okay. All righty, let's stand together. It's been a good session. John. Dear Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to once again be in thy holy presence, Father, in this house that has been dedicated to you. And thank you, Father, for allowing us to discuss the business of your church. May we continue to reach out and respond and be fruitful givers, Father, and continue to reach out to those around us. And we ask your special blessing upon the businesses yet to come tomorrow. And thank you again for allowing us to meet here. And I pray for those this evening in the future uh, classes and the men that are speaking tonight. And we just give you all the honor and praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I suspect. You do not get to not hear me very often, do you? John, I gave you the wrong sheet. Would you bring that back, please? <laughs> I gave him the announcement. <laughs> I should have let him given them. Uh, once again, the free books and free copies of past issues of Hastening Times are available upon the table to my right on the south wall here. Please feel free to take any of them that you so choose. And if you need multiple copies for missionary work 
or any other purpose, please take them. Uh, if you have any questions, please see Ron or Pat Walsh, and they can assist you. The uh, very last conversation I had with Sister Teresa Durant, who uh, passed away recently due to that car accident, was uh, Saturday as she and Brother Tony came up here to help with the cleanup. And they were doing the restrooms, checking the towers and paper and this and that and the other. And Sister Teresa found a ring in the, I guess it was ladies' shower room or something, and she gave it to me. And if any of you have lost a ring, if you describe it, it's yours. Uh, if not, I will hold on to it as a remembrance of her. But uh, I have it. It's a silver-looking ring, so if you can describe it, it's yours. Thank you.